So China's presence in the Middle East has dramatically changed over the decades. And what is going to happen over the next couple of decades, over the next 20 years or so, will have huge ramifications for businesses in the Middle East, and it will have big implications for the competitive landscape and how companies actually operate here. What we've seen, if you look at China's presence in the Middle East from a historical perspective, China very much viewed the Middle East and indeed the whole world through the Cold War ideological lens. So in the 80s, China's view on the world was very much shaped by the Cold War. You move into the 90s, China actually viewed the Middle East in the 90s as really a place where empires go to die. You move into 2000 and what China recognized is that the Middle East needs to be treated in geostrategic terms. They're recognizing that they're bringing huge quantities of energy supplies from the Middle East, but at the same time, they want to have what is called a free rider policy. So this policy means that they don't have a security presence in the Middle East, but they try to extract as much value from these partnerships as possible. What we're seeing now, moving into the next decade from 2020, you're recognizing that China is viewing the Middle East in much more of a strategic partnership arrangement. And the big question moving forward, now that China has hundreds of billions of dollars worth of investment in the Middle East, now that it's the most important trading partner for many countries in the Middle East, what is the big question is whether China's relationship with the Middle East slowly starts to evolve into having a security presence in this part of the world. Now, another big question when you talk about China's relationship with the Middle East, and when we talk to Amir Boardroom members, is which countries will actually benefit from Chinese investment. There seems to be a common mistake, particularly amongst regional executives, but also when we give talks for global board members, around the idea that because China has a passive relationship in the Middle East, in terms of from a security point of view, and it has very much a non-interventionist policy, that therefore it does not favor one market over another. And it does not actually favor, from a geostrategic perspective, it does not actually favor different countries. That is a mistake and it misses the point around China's different levels of strategic diplomatic engagement. And when you look at these, this taxonomy of these different types of partnerships, what you recognize is there's a few countries that are going to be the cornerstone of Chinese investment and policy, including the Belt and Road Initiative in the Middle East. And that will have implications on trade flows, will have implications on G2G deals, and that in turn will change the competitive landscape over the next couple of decades as Chinese companies continue to come in and operate in the Middle East, operating in areas like energy, operating in areas such as infrastructure, focusing on trade and investment, but also areas like nuclear energy, satellites, and as well, renewable energy in the future. These are the spaces where China is going to want to compete in the Middle East. And if you're a Western multinational or an international company from a different part of the world, or indeed a big regional local company, you need to be aware of how these winds are changing because they will have implications for your business.